Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be talking about how to generate URLs as well as deal with URL parameters inside of Django. So first thing, let's talk about this URL. We're hard coding this here, which isn't the end of the world, but it might be ideal to generate something like this. This allows us to move around our apps a little bit safer without breaking everything. So first thing, go into your urls.py and add in here app name and we'll just set that to reading. And we can also go into the URL patterns here, add a new one, path, and this is how you deal with parameters. You put less than, greater than signs, you put the type, and then you put what the parameter is going to be called. So book ID. This can be managed by a new view here. So views.info, and we'll just say name is info. So let's create that view. So right now it's currently saying module reading.views has no attribute info. So let's fix that. Go into views and just say def info. It's gonna have the request and it's also going to have the book ID. And here we're gonna do something very similar. So copy this, paste this, and instead of all, we're just going to say PK is equal to book ID. So I'll just get one book. And we can just change this to book. Just update this to be correct. And this is going to go to a new template, which could be called info.html. Inside of templates, we can right click new file, info.html, and just print the book, like so. All right, so let's test it out. Let's go to our homepage. And when you click one of these, it's going to pass that ID of one, which you can see at the URL down there in the corner. It's going to pass it to the view. And okay, we got an issue. Instead of all, I actually want to use dot get. There we go. So let's try it now. Do a refresh. And there we go, we get the book information. So imagine there's a lot more in here, like the ISBN, the author info, pictures, maybe like a sample, whatever there might be. So that is how you parameterize, blah, that's a mouthful. That's how you use parameters for your URLs so that we can use IDs and switch it up depending on what book we're talking about. All right, so now the last thing is how to automatically generate the URL rather than hard coding here. And to do this, replace the href portion here, curly brace, parentheses, parentheses, those aren't parentheses, curly brace, percent sign, percent sign, curly brace. And in here, you can say URL, and then the name of the URL based off of this file here. So we're trying to grab info. And we also put this app name here, so you prefix that with a colon. So it'll look like this, inside of single quotes here, reading, colon, info. And then after that, you can say what you wanna to pass to it as arguments. So we're trying to pass book.id like so. All right, I saved it. Now let's take a look at our web page. We do a refresh and ideally everything works exactly the same. You shouldn't see any differences. That's because I haven't changed any of the URL structure. But what if we went in here and we went test forward slash? Well, now let's go back do a refresh and look at these. They automatically update to reading forward slash test forward slash one and they still work. So we avoided the hard coding and it made our app a little bit more dynamic. Very cool. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Stay tuned for the next one. I believe it's the final one in the series if I'm counting right. So I'm pretty excited. See you then.